A depletion MOSFET is one of the two broad categories of, of MOSFET devices where MOSFETs are metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. And it's quite a mouthful, but we'll get into some details about why it's, it's, it's called that. So what we're looking at here is a cross-sectional view of a depletion MOSFET. And I've got three terminals drawn on this depletion MOSFET. Oftentimes there's a, a fourth terminal here, the substrate or body connection at the bottom, which is usually usually tied to the source, but I've left it off in this case. We've got so we've got the three the three connections, the source, the gate, and the drain. So exactly the same same terminals as we have on the JFET, and they have a similar function as in the JFET. But you'll notice that between the gate and the silicon sort of base of the transistor here, we've got this layer of silicon dioxide. So all of this, all of this here, is a layer of this highly insulating silicon dioxide. So the gate, the gate signal is insulated from the from the the n-doped and p-doped material underneath it. So it provides a very high level of, of insulation between the gate and the and the the dope so semiconductor, uh, and we have between the source and the drain an n channel, a doped uh, silicon uh, n doped material between the source and the drain, and so this is this is what it would look like if there was no no biasing voltage applied at all. There would be this this pre existing in n channel between the source and the drain. So if I apply a voltage between the source and the drain, I'm going to have current flowing. And because of all these extra electron charge carriers there in the between the source and the drain, one thing to note about the silicon dioxide layer is it's very static sensitive. So when when handling discrete MOSFET devices, it's important to take some ESD precautions so that we don't blow out the silicon dioxide and and uh, essentially short the gate to the rest of the uh, the transistor. So the, the general control principle here is if you apply a voltage at the gate that's more negative than at the source, what you're going to do is push electrons away from the N channel here into the P, P region, and you'll end up with, with a, a, a channel here that gets smaller and smaller as the depletion region grows and takes up all this, this N channel. And, and so once you get to a, a certain point, uh, where this gate voltage is, is negative enough, your end channel will be gone. There will be nothing, nothing. There will be no extra electrons left in there, so you end up with a with no electrical connection between the source and the drain. So this works very similar to where the JFET was. The way the JFET worked, when you provide a voltage that's negative enough between the gate and the source, you close off that channel between the source and the drain. Now, where things are different in the depletion MOSFET is if I if I make the voltage here. Um, Gate more positive than, than the source. What I'm going to do is I'll pull extra electrons out of the P channel here into the N channel. So what I will effectively be doing is increasing the size of this N channel, and and therefore decreasing the increasing the channel between the source and the drain. So I've got a few ranges to look at for what happens when, when my VGS changes. So if my VGS is less than some some value, and, and the same so the same thing as as in the JFET, that's VP or V pinch off, then the channel is disappears, and I eliminate the channel. Channel is gone. So ID, the current between the drain and the source, will be equal to zero. If my gate source voltage is less than zero but greater than the pinch off voltage then my channel will be decreased somewhat from from the default state but I will still have an ID and this this is called the this is when we have put the channel in depletion region okay, we've depleted the channel from its base case but we haven't made it zero and then the third range is if VGS is greater than zero. So if VGS is greater than zero, then the channel is going to be the channel size will be increased beyond the the default state when VGS is equal to zero. We'll have we'll have an ID greater than zero again. And this region, because I'm I'm making my channel bigger than the default, we call this the enhancement region. 
enhancement region. So these are the three things to think to, to recognize, the three states to recognize for the ranges of VGS. Now, the relationship between ID and VGS for a JFET was ID is equal to some constant IDSS or the drain source current at saturation times 1 minus the VGS value that you're applying divided by the pinch off voltage, so that's the voltage that the channel gets closed, squared. So this applied to JFETs. It also applies to depletion MOSFETs. The same equation applies to depletion MOSFETs. The difference is that VGS here can now go positive. So remember with JFETs, if we were to plot out the relationship between ID and VGS, we had some VGS, we had some VP value down here, and we had some, let me put it here, some IDSS value up, up here. And it increased quadratically there. And that was it for a JFET. With a depletion MOSFET, we get the same graph. If we have the same, we could have a, a depletion MOSFET with the same value of VP and IDSS as a, as a JFET. But what's going to happen? As VGS gets greater than zero, we can still keep increasing ID. And you can see in this area up above, up above IDSS, ID increases quite rapidly for changes in VGS. And here's another picture of a, for another depletion MOSFET with the relationship between VGS and, and ID. And here's my IDSS, which would be the maximum that I could have for my drain current for a JFET. But because of that, the difference here, I have a silicon dioxide layer between my gate and my, my end channel. I, and so I don't have an actual electrical connection, so I can make my gate more positive than the source, <clears throat> which allows me to increase my drain current beyond IDSS. And I also have some a similar relationship between VDS and ID. So my ID scale is the same on both these graphs. For different VGS values, I'm going to have the different different relationships between ID and VDS. I'm going to have the different saturation, a different maximum currents, so reach the saturation uh, saturation current at different points. And you can see here, my for a VGS of 0.9 volts, so that's VGS above above zero, obviously, I still have a relationship between ID and VDS. And my saturation current at 0.9 volts is, is higher than it was at zero volts and minus 1.5 and minus 4 volts, etc. And all of the calculations that we've done before with JFETs, where we're figuring out the DC operating point and using Shockley's equation, and then figuring out the transconductance so that we could figure out the gain and, and the input and output impedances of various amplifier configurations, apply for a DMOSFET the same as they did for a JFET. So as an illustration to show you how similar depletion MOSFET circuits are, I've drawn a depletion MOSFET common source amplifier circuit with my input applied here at the gate and my output taken here at the drain. And you'll notice here's my symbol for an N-channel depletion MOSFET. I've got a voltage divider bias. I've got an IDSS of 7 milliamps. I've got a VP of minus 4 volts for this, for this, J, uh, this MOSFET. My source resistor is bypassed by the capacitor. So what I need to do to figure out what the, I want to find out what the AV is, what the, the Z in, the input impedance, and the output impedance. These are the three things I want to figure out. So the first thing I need to do is find the DC operating point. And to find the DC operating point, I need a couple of pieces of information. Well, I want, I want to find ID and I want to find VGS. So these are two unknowns. I'm going to need to come up with two equations for this circuit to figure out these two. So the first equation is Shockley's equation. ID is equal to IDSS times 1 minus VGS over VP all squared. So there's my first equation. My second equation is going to be made up from the from from the circuit here. And 
what I need here. Well, I know I'm going to figure out VG and figure out VS, and then I'll give me VGS, and I, that will be, I'll be able to figure out that in terms of ID. So VGS, or VG, I should say, is the voltage at this point. No current flows into the base at the gate here. So this is just a voltage divide, 18 volts is divided by between this 100 mega ohm and this 15 mega ohm resistor. So VG is equal to 18 volts times 15 over 15 plus 100. It works out to 2.35 volts. And VS is the voltage at this point with respect to ground, so that's going to just be equal to the voltage drop across that 200 ohm resistor. Vs, so the current through the resistor times the resistance of it, 200 ohms. Therefore, Vgs is equal to Vg, 2.35 volts, minus Vs, which is 200 Id. So there's one equation relating Vgs and Id, and there's the other equation relating Vgs and Id. And ID. And just like with JFETs, I can solve this numerically, figure out what ID and VGS are. I could solve it uh, with a computer program. MATLAB would, would do this quite nicely. Or I can solve it graphically. And graphically is what I'm going to do right now because I want to just, that's going to help really highlight the difference between a depletion MOSFET and a JFET. So when I go and plot these things for, the, for that first, first equation, I'm going to have a few points for VGS and ID. So minus 4 volt, which is VP, my drain current will be 0. At half of VP, my drain current is going to be at 1.75 milliamps. At minus 1.2 volts, my drain current is going to be 3.5 milliamps. At 0 volts, my drain current will be IDSS or 7 milliamps and just to highlight the fact that I can have positive at, at 1 volt at 1 volt plug in 1 volt to Shockley's equation and I get 9.53 milliamps for my second equation which is just a straight line pick a couple points, two points is all I need for VGS and ID so if I pick an ID of 0, I plug in 0 to that equation, I get a VGS of 2.35 volts. And if I plug in 0 for VGS, then I get an ID of 11.75 milliamps. And here I've got those two equations plotted on the same graph. There's my Shockley's equation, and you can see that it extends beyond the point where VGS is equal to zero, so VGS can become positive. ID goes beyond the IDSS. And here's my, uh, my relationship between VGS and ID that I got from the, from the circuit. And you can see that the intersection point is with VGS positive. And in fact, that intersection point is VGS of 0.5 volts and ID of 8.2 milliamps. And if now that I have my ID, I can also figure out VDS value. VDS is equal to 1.6 volts. So I figured out the DC operating point for this for this amplifier. And the next thing I want to do is figure out the amplification of it. So the AV, the Z in, and the Z out. The first thing I'm going to need is my transconductance, my GM, and the GM equation is derived from Shockley's equation and it's just so it's going to be the same as it was for for the JFETs and it's going so it's going to be 2 times IDSS all over the magnitude of VP times 1 minus VGS so the operating point 0.5 over VP minus 4. And this works out to 3.94 millisiemens. And if you figure out what GM not is, or GMO, GM0, you would find that it's GM0 is less than this value for GM. And that's because we are 
existing, the operating point is existing right here, the slope of that line at that point is more than the slope of the line at that point, which is your gm0. And we've already derived equations for the voltage gain, the input impedance, and the output impedance in this case because the because my my RS is bypassed, the voltage gain is simply going to be negative GMRD, negative because it's a, this is an inverting amplifier. So that's going to be negative 3.94 times 10 to the minus 3 times 1800. And that works out to negative 7.1. The input impedance simply the parallel combination of, of those two resistors so 100 mega ohms in parallel with 15 mega ohms and that works out to 13 mega ohms and the output impedance if we don't include the R, the little rd value it's going to work it's going to work out to 1800 ohms so very similar to the JFET circuit, the only difference being that our operating point is above zero volts for VGS, which gives us a higher GM than, than the GM0, which would be at this point, and allows us to have a higher gain. Our gain for this circuit is higher than it would be for a JFET at this point, because we couldn't have a VGS greater than zero volts. So I hope you learned a little bit about depletion MOSFETs, and I'll see you in the next video.